This is Banjo, and today I'm going over tactical nuclear employment in the MiG-21 for DCS World. For today's example, we'll be using the smaller RN-28, No employment for the RN-24 is the same. In cockpit, we're able to see just above the ASP gun site that we now have a control box for handling settings of the RN bombs. The first will configure the aircraft for ground attack by setting the master mode selector into ground in the downwards position. Then moving on to the ASP, we'll move the gun selector into launch, we'll set the fire mode to bombardment. Then, depending on your preference, set the ASP into either automatic or manual. You can cage the gyro and set the ground target size. Although this really isn't necessary, standard employment of this weapon can be quite hazardous due to the blast wave, where lofting or over-the-shoulder methods of bombing are preferred. With the aircraft configured for ground attack, we'll move on to the nuclear control box above the ASP gun site. As you can see, we have a series of six switches with three indicators. The first indicator on the left indicates that the bomb is armed on the airframe. The center indicates mass for arm, with the right indicating safe. On the lower row, the first switch on the left will jettison the bomb from the airframe, and the switch to the right of it will set the status of the bomb to either safe or armed when it is jettisoned. Here we're able to see a short example where I jettison an armed bomb. Note the master arm indicator coming on when jettison master arm is enabled and the equipped indicator going off when the bomb is released. Next we'll move on to the remaining four toggle switches starting with the two on the far right. The one on the far right will select between either airburst or impact fusing with only impact functional in the downwards position. I'll demonstrate this by leaving it on airburst. Inside of this is the braking chute, with the braking chute enabled in the upwards position. This is non-functional. For the two remaining central toggle switches, the one on the right in the downwards position selects the aircraft's regular suite of weapons on its inboard and outboard pylons, while in the upwards position it selects the use of the nuclear bomb. With this selector in the upwards position, and bombardment selected as the fire mode for the ASP, pressing weapons release in any weapons selector position will release the bomb, regardless of selector position. The remaining toggle switch functions as the master arm for the bomb, with the downwards position safe in the upwards position arming the bomb. As we can see, in the upwards position, with the bomb selected, the master arm indicator goes red. It's at this point, if I were to press weapons release, regardless of weapons selector position, it will release the bomb as I am in ground attack with bombardment selected as my fire mode. At this point, I'll demonstrate a dive attack, though I would say this is not advisable due to the blast wave these bombs have and the fact the braking chute is non-functional at the moment. So at this point I'll dive in at a steep angle of about 55-60 degrees. Now instead of riding it down until the ASP source has given me range to target, I'll release the bomb as I start to level off. You may have noticed how both the nuclear bomb on the ventral pylon, as well as the Fab 100s on my outboard pylons were released, as I had the weapon selector set to the outboard bombing position, and it released both at the time of weapons release. I'll demonstrate this in a short example here by moving the weapon selector into one of the bomb positions, moving the master mode into ground attack, setting the ASP for launch and bombardment. At this point I'll arm the bomb as well by selecting the bomb and moving its master arm into the upper position. Upon pressing weapons release we're able to see that both the outboard pylons I had selected as well as the nuclear bomb loaded on the ventral pylon are released as well. One more thing to note is Regardless of weapon selector position, as in this case we can see it's set for my outboard air-to-air -air missiles, the bomb in your ventral pylon will be released if the bomb is selected and bombardment is selected as the fire mode any time you press weapons release. Finally, I'll demonstrate a lofting attack using the RN-28 against the same targets we attacked before. This would be the preferred method of delivery as it keeps the aircraft safe from the blast wave of the bomb. It can be tricky to judge the range and get the timing right in a lofting attack, so it will take you some practice. So at this point, 5 kilometers target roughly, I'll start pitching back, mindful of over G, and at about 45 degrees pitch, I'll release the bomb, and I'll keep pitching back, this time at about 20 angle of attack, to be about the max you should do any sort of vertical maneuver in the MiG-21 at. I'll keep pitching back and separate with as much distance between me and that bomb as I can in the time it takes for it to impact and detonate. Next we'll see this in attack view clip, and here we're able to see as I'm going full burn towards the target, and I judge the range as best I can, trying to be about 5 kilometers from target. Start my pitch back, being careful not to over G the bomb off my airframe, and at a 45 degree pitch angle I release the bomb. And here you can see as I pull an Immelman going the other way, and the bomb lands almost squarely right on top of the target. 